All right, so now that we have the break, this is the time to go out there and make videos on topics that I kind of had just been pushing down the timeline because there are so many other in the news type of things that have popped up over the past little while here. So today I wanted to talk about a Carolina Hurricanes prospect. And yes, you read the thumbnail, you read the title and everything correctly. This man works in Riz support. He is the king of Riz. He's in quantum Rizics. You can't resist the Rizly bear attack. The Wizard of Oz, Lord of the Riz. Is Riz Khalifa. Let's talk today about a prospect who's actually worth talking about. And I know I've kind of been joking about this the entire time, but there is a very legitimate prospect profile that I do think is worth acknowledging here, especially for a guy who was taken with the second last pick in the 2019 draft. Let's head over to Carolina and talk about a guy playing for the University of Denver, Massimo Rizzo. Now, the thing is, I just wanted to get into linguistics here because it's really important to why I'm talking about this guy in the way that I am. Massimo Rizzo is a name that, of course, you know, Riz is in the last name there, but Massimo, all 365 days jokes aside, Massimo, if you translate from Italian into English, literally means maximum. If you do the adjective definition in Italian, it's a superlative of being big, better than normal, so maximum. Maximum Rizzo. That's his name. Literally Maximum Riz. And I know some of you in the comments may be like, what in the world are you doing? Like, you're making fun of this guy's name, Lego. Uh, no, I'm not. This guy has the coolest name out of every NHL player who has been drafted, developed, and whatever, pretty much in the history of the league. There are some other good ones that have popped up here throughout the days, but in my opinion, Massimo Rizzo. This is the top one. And not only is his name a very, you know, insignificant, but kind of funny conversation point to go out there and acknowledge, but his prospect profile is legit. And what I wanted to do in this video was go over how Massimo Rizzo became a Carolina Hurricane and how this all kind of stems from the New York Rangers trade of Rick Nash back in 2018. So, let's go over to the Rick Nash thing. Let's talk about Rizzo a little bit later because we kind of got the introductions out of the way. I want to give a little bit of a teaser there. So, Rick Nash, everybody kind of knows that he was the best Columbus Blue Jackets player for a very long time. He was tied in a Rocket Richard winning season and a three-way tie, which was very nice to see back in the day. But eventually, in 2012-13, Rick Nash made his way over to the New York Rangers, where he had spent the next few seasons doing pretty well over there. He maxed out getting 69 points in 79 games played in 2014-15, and was a pretty good top six caliber scoring forward for that squad. Rick Nash playing with Marty St. Louis, and you had Stahl over there too. The Rangers had a pretty good team back in the day, and it was highlighted by them making the Stanley Cup Finals in 2014. That in which, unfortunately, they did not win against the LA Kings, but Rick Nash was a very solid player pretty much up until the end. Now, sure, he was aging out, and the Rangers were heading towards some sort of a retool on the fly, and so, in 2018, you had yourselves a Rick Nash trade, which sent him over to the Boston Bruins with $3.9 million retained, which was 50% of the deal. In return, the Rangers got themselves Matt Bolesky with retained salary, Ryan Spooner, Ryan Lindgren, a first-round pick that the Rangers inevitably traded away, and then they had the seventh-round pick in 2019 from Boston. Shortly after, just a few months later, on the day of the 2018 NHL draft, the Rangers traded away the seventh round pick to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for a seventh round pick in that season. That pick ended up becoming 216th overall, wherein the Rangers selected Riley Hughes, and the Boston seventh round pick was sent over to Carolina, wherein it ended up actually being 216th overall as well. In 2019, the Bruins ended up losing in the Stanley Cup Finals to the Blues, so all of their draft picks were second last in the rounds. And this seventh round pick ended up becoming 216th because of it. The Hurricanes then selected Massimo Rizzo, a guy playing out of the BCHL in 2018-19. And as a player from BC, he's actually from Burnaby, which is cool because that's just a little bit of a drive away from my house. He was a guy with over a point per game season in his draft eligible year. 40 points, 37 games played, not the best point production in the world for a guy who's going to be drafted into the NHL out of the BCHL, but I mean, getting taken with literally the second last pick in the NHL draft certainly is not that bad of a metric. 
You had other players like Alex Newhook, for example, in the very same draft. You had Fabro and Tyson Jost earlier in 2016 who had gone in the NHL draft in pretty high regard. But these guys were like way above and beyond over a point per game by such a wide margin. So Rizzo going to the Hurricanes with a just barely over point per game year was a pretty significant development in his overall prospect profile. The seasons after, the 5'11 center ended up playing some more years in BCHL hockey. He had over a point per game year with the Coquitlam Express. Unfortunately, played zero games the year after that with Chilliwack, but in 2021-2022, the then 20-year-old forward made his debut with the University of Denver Pioneers in the NCAA. As a freshman, he was a point-per-game guy, getting 36 points in 39 games played. Now, in this season's worth of play, the guy has 32 points in 27 games, 10 goals, and 22 assists. Really not a bad statistical profile for a guy who was literally the second-last pick in his draft year. He is also 11th in NCAA scoring right now, and if you go over to some articles written about Rizzo and his overall play, you can see what exactly makes him so effective. Take a look at this. Dauber Prospects updates from Victor Nuno on December 13th, 2022. There is a little bit of a write-up on Rizzo that I wanted to read for you over here. Link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and see that. Another Carolina Hurricanes pick is Rizzo, who was taken at the end of the 2019 draft in the seventh round. He is one pick away from being Mr. Irrelevant at 216 out of 17. Rizzo is another young player with a June 13th birthday, drafted out of the BCHL and played two more seasons there after attending the University of Denver. For the NCAA champions, Rizzo had 36 points in 39 games played, and this season for the defending champions, he has 23 points in an 18-game season. By his prospecting NHL equivalency score, he is looking like a replacement-level producer. On the other hand, his PNHLE, according to NHL ranking, approaches that of a first-line player with 60-plus point potential upside. With this kind of discrepancy, it is worth to take a flyer on this player, but also if he struggles when transitioning to the pro ranks in the AHL, you can be less hesitant to drop him. This article is written from the point of view of a fantasy perspective, so if you're in a keeper league, you're thinking about taking this guy in the NCAA and holding on to him as he develops and becomes anything better, this is sort of the discrepancy here. Some analytical models say that he could be a replacement line level scorer. Others, like the NHL ranking app, are saying that Rizzo could be as good as a legit top six forward. And that's really good for a guy taken with this pick. I want to stress this very clearly, and I've been saying this the entire video, but getting just anybody, let alone actually a top six player, but a guy who can play in the NHL with literally the second last pick of the draft is a win. And a huge win at that. Like, this would be an incredible story for a guy who was a BCHL captain getting drafted at the end of the draft and then becoming an NHLer like let's say four years-ish after that draft ended up concluding. He had a season where he played zero games. Now, unfortunately, I'm doing all my research here, trying to figure out from articles what happened. It says that Rizzo did have a pretty bad injury history in the BCHL, but I can't find any confirmation if that 2020-2021 zero-game played season was strictly due to injuries or if there was something with the virus or whatever, because there were some BCHL games played in that year. I just can't really figure it out why he had nothing on his name. There aren't really too many seventh-round overall guys that garner too much attention playing in the BCHL, but for Rizzo and the way he's playing in the NCAA, it's really put him on the map in a great way for sure. Here's an article on Rizzo back from six months ago, published by Connor Power on CardiaCane.com. This is the Carolina Hurricanes version of Fansided. Massimo Rizzo actually showed off pretty well at Hurricanes Prospect Camp. He put his innovation and skill on display. With great hands and a very good knowledge of what has required him defensively, there is a lot to like about Rizzo's direction. It's also worth noting that he isn't the most fluid of skaters, but if he can improve how he skates, this is a player with tremendous upside. Carolina retains the right to sign him until August 15th, 2024. And so that's a little bit ways away. There's still at least another season in this guy as a Carolina Hurricanes prospect before he decides to test free agency if that's what he chooses to do. But I just wanted to make this video talking about a guy with Maximum Riz because it was a really interesting name just to go out there and bring up. But there is a legitimately good prospect profile here, especially for a guy taken where he was, that I thought it would be really interesting just to see where everything came from. The Rick Nash trade from New York over to Boston, how a pick from that trade was sent over to Carolina, and now that guy's got Riz in the NCAA. Like, the Denver Pioneers have been really good to this guy. 
for sure. He's getting first line minutes and he's playing with some talented players. Carter Mazur, Red Wings prospect, is also getting a fair share on that top line. But overall, it's been a pretty good run for a guy taken towards the tail end of the draft. And you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about Massimo Rizzo and his NHL path to stardom? Do you think there's an actual player profile here? Do you believe me when I tell you I'm not making this video just because his name is great, but because he actually is a great prospect too? Or do you think I'm just a liar and I wanted to have an excuse to talk about the Rizzler? So thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And bye.